I'm David Jones, and welcome to Drive-By Shakespeare. To briefly summarize, King Lear is about a monarch in ancient Britain who decides to retire and divide his kingdom among his three daughters. Things don't turn out anything like he planned. Sir, I do love you more than words can wield the matter. Only she comes too short. I alone felicitate in your dear highness's love. I am sure my love's more ponderous than my tongue. Reason not the need. Our basest beggars are in their poorest things superfluous. Allow not nature more than nature needs. Man's life is cheap as beasts. Thou art a lady. If only to go warm or gorgeous, well, nature needs not but thou gorgeous wears, which scarcely keeps thee warm. But for true need, oh, heavens give me that patience. Patience. I need you see me here, you gods, a poor old man who's full of grief as age, wretched in both. If it be you that stir these daughters' hearts against their father, stir fool me not so much to bear it tamely, touch me with noble anger, and let not woman's weapons, water drops, stain my man's cheeks. No. You unnatural hags! I will have such revenges on you both that all the world shall. I shall do such things! What they are yet, I know not. But they shall be the terrors of the earth! You think I will weep? No, I will not weep. I have full cause of weeping, but this heart shall break into a hundred thousand flowers, or yet I will weep. Thou fool! I shall go mad! Finally, having rejected all three of his daughters, Lear goes out into a storm, which parallels the war in his kingdom, the war in his mind, and the war in nature. Thou thinkest as much that this contentious storm invades to the skin. So tis to thee, but for the greater malady is fixed, the lesser is scarce felt. This tempest in my heart doth from my senses take all feeling else save what beats there. Filial ingratitude. No! I will weep no more. In such a night to shut me out. Pour on! I will endure. In such a night as this. Oh, read him. Goneril, your old kind father's friend, heart gave you all. Well, in King Lear, I remember the scene where um, King Lear is on the heath. Um, he's, he's out in the field and he says, crack ye thunderbolts, you know, and he, his inner experience of his agony of discovering about his daughters who betrayed him and all that is parallel to the tremendous voltage of the storm. And so Shakespeare is using that storm imagery to show the inner emotions of the character. And it's very powerful and beautiful too.
If you ask someone on the street what they know about King Lear, what do you think they'll say? I, I don't know enough about King Lear. I thought I was King Lear, you know, playing King Lear. King Lear? I don't remember King Lear, it's been too long. Um, just it was about a king and his daughters, I think, something like that. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, King, king Lear, I love it. I love King Lear. Uh, I'm a very old man, so I'm very involved in King Lear. And uh, yes, uh, I certainly know a lot about King Lear. Uh, it's a great play. It's, it would be my second favorite. There's a new production of uh, King Lear, I think, uh, that is set in uh, modern day Africa. I say an old man made a mistake giving away his kingdom to his uh, daughters before he died. And as the storm worsens, Lear comes to a philosophical realization that man is nothing but a poor, bare, forked animal. Dost thou squiddy at me? No eyes in your head, no money in your purse, yet you see how the world goes. A man may see how the world goes, but no eyes. Look with thine ears. Behold! How yon justice rails upon yon simple peacock. And I hear change places and have me dandy. Which is the fear? Which is the justice? The dogs obey in office. Get thee glass eyes and like a scurvy politician seem to see the things thou dost not. I love Lear, King Lear. And why is he? It's so, it's so tragic and he is so tortured, but he wants to be a good father and a good king. So. And well, he's got two daughters who are very greedy. He wants to be loved, uh, and uh, so two daughters know that if they suck up to him, that they will get all the goodies. And Cordelia, the most wonderful and perfect daughter, uh, she can't just uh, say, I love you on demand. And that's another one of those great lines, because when he says to her, uh, what do you have to say? She says, nothing. And he says, nothing comes from nothing. And that is a really important line, and it's, and it's a very moving and good story about how greedy people screw themselves and screw each other. Well, it's a conflict that everybody knows about today, parents and children. <laughs> <laughs> Adult uh, children of dysfunctional parents, how's that? But I think they're all tragedies. My mother never went to high school. She got a job as a nanny when she was 14. And where she lived, at a widower's home, raising his three children, when she was 14, he had a collection of what they called the great books. She read every single one of them, and she had a photographic memory. Forty years later, when I was a Johnny, and dealing with the works of Shakespeare, I, she'd say, what are you reading now, Sue? And I'd say, ah, King Lear. And she would quote it verbatim by the page. She had memorized it when she was 14 years old. I love King Lear. <laughs> and the reason that I like it um, is because that story is told over and over and over again. And it's very helpful to in conversations to help people understand that um, the, that there is nothing extreme. There is no black, there is no white, there are only grays. And that um, there is no such thing as complete evil on the planet. Finally reunited with his daughter Cordelia, the one he always loved the most, Lear is captured by the enemy forces and sent to prison with her. But he tells his daughter they will sing like birds in a cage. No. No, no, no. Come. Let's away to prison. We two alone will sit like birds in the cage when thou dost ask of me blessing. 
I will kneel down and ask of thee forgiveness. And so we'll live and pray and sing and tell old tales and laugh at gilded butterflies and hear old rogues talk of court news and they will talk of him too. Who loses and who wins, who's in, who's out. And take upon us the mystery of things as if we were God's spies. And we'll wear out in a walled prison packs and sex of the great ones that ebb and flow by the moon. Upon such sacrifices, my Cordelia, the gods themselves throw incense. The good years shall devour them, flesh and fell, ere they shall make us weep. We'll see them start first. who got human nature right was Shakespeare. And I think if you look in his plays, you can see how it is that he really could see to the core of, of what it is that motivates people. I think Shakespeare speaks to us in an eternal language, don't you? It goes on uh, when we shuffled off this mortal coil. I mean, those are words I've become very much aware of the beauty of the language ever since I started reading some of these authors that we get in our bookstore, and I just can't believe how they use the language, and he was the master. In the final scene, Lear enters carrying the corpse of his daughter Cordelia, who's been hanged in a prison cell. He's now beyond help. No. No, no life. Why should a dog, a horse, a rat have life and thou no breath at all? Thou'lt come no more. You undo this button. Thank you, sir. Do you see this? Look on her. Lips. <laughs> <laughs> 